Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to part three of our first look at Ultimate General American Revolution. This game is currently in early access, just came out about three days, three, four days ago, and we are playing through the game, which currently has a American campaign, will eventually have a British campaign as well as multiple other starting dates. But at the moment, it is uh, May 5th of 1775. We fought two battles to try and take Providence back from the British after they retook it from us. Both of those battles have been bloody failures, although we've given the British a bloody nose each time. Um, their ability to sort of stand and fight is just considerably greater than our own. And so that's been that's been a problem. We haven't been able to we haven't been able to match them and we don't have the. Uh, tech researched yet to really be able to form a, a better army. We're kind of at the whims of, you know, whatever units are given to us from the Continental Congress uh, in sort of random events. Eventually, we'll be able to raise new units and things like that, but we've got to research uh, different techs. So right now we're working on uh, the artillery department, which will allow us to start going down like building artillery batteries and things. Um, and eventually we want to research barracks and things like that to allow us to uh, raise units or companies or other things like that. Um, at the moment, our sort of supply of money and materials up here at the top is, is largely, I wouldn't say unneeded because we are using some of the materials to build some barracks at Newport and Han Hat and uh, Hartford, but uh, that's where we find ourselves. Now we have to hope that the British do not march south on us and try to crush the rebellion once and for all, because if we do lose... Uh, another battle here. I, I mean, I don't know what will be left of our troops. We certainly cannot defend Newport effectively. Um, so we'll have to figure that out. But at the moment, we are uh, waiting for a couple of very weakened regiments to show up at Newport and really just waiting for some reinforcement through recruitment to occur. We do have some units that are heavily under strength. It would be nice to be able to take the 6th Connecticut and merge them with like the second Connecticut or something, because right now they only have one company in the six and I, I can't raise new units. So that's an issue. We just lost Portsmouth to the British uh, in a, an assault there. I think what I'm going to do is once I reinforce here at Newport enough, if they don't attack me, I'm going to double back, pull our troops toward Hartford and then move north toward Fort Stevens or Le Leicester. It just seems like they've got too much in front of us to, for us to be able to overwhelm. We need to try and strike somewhere where they are weak. And it feels like maybe that would be our best opportunity because I don't think we've got the strength to like keep going at Hartford. Although maybe, I, I don't know, uh, the British heavily outnumber us at this point. I don't fully understand the construction management of things here. So like Hartford right now, it's our one province that we actually can do things in. We've got a one out of three... I'm assuming is that built in the, oh shoot. I don't know what I just did. Apparently clicking on this does stuff. I just undid whatever I was doing, but I, I can construct things here by clicking, I assume. Um, I'm assuming that's like expanding industry maybe. Right now it's one out of three for logistics. One out of five for agriculture. No factories. I don't think any shipbuilding. They produce lumber. I think this is iron and wheat. I think that's how I'm reading this. The The construction management window is not very, very intuitive. Um, so I'll have to, I'll have to do some digging outside of this, uh, the stream at some of the videos they provided to understand it a bit more. But yeah, you can see here we've got 13 coal, 9 saltpeter, uh, 23 wood, 5 textiles, 12 iron, and 3 copper. We have no production points and no shipbuilding points at the moment. Doesn't really matter. I don't have the text to really use much, much of this yet. So let's go ahead and uh, unpause and see how things unfold. Hopefully the British don't march south on us quite yet. We are, oh shoot, so we got these fleets here of ships that are much stronger than our own. We have one ship. Be interesting if we could try and like raid some other commerce. I don't know 
exactly how useful that would be, but where's where's Amazon going? Go ahead and get in the garrison. You too, Pike. All right, so the garrison at Newport with the addition of these units is just shy of 900 men. I guess we might as well send our one ship out and see what we can accomplish. I'm assuming the British have much stronger forces than our own at sea, but maybe we can keep in, in shore here and find some commerce stuff to raid. Meanwhile, we did some of our units are reinforcing here, so you can see these numbers have popped up here. That'll continue. Meanwhile, we're, we are drawing some ammunition in here, getting some of these units equipped with a bit more ammo. I don't know if I can control these guys when they're out of... Oh, yeah, I can. All right, well, let's see if we can go raid some commerce off Boston or something. They are attacking some supply ships here, some ammo ships off Newport. Oh, yeah, let's... Oh, 46 guns? Oh, that's bad. I was thinking like, oh yeah, we can do something, but 46 guns, dear God. Let's at least see what the naval combat looks like. Does it look like, uh, does it look like Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail or what? Oh, why are we already broadside on with them? This is not going to end well. It looks like it's basically Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. Maybe we can out sail them and get behind them. HMS Egret has 200 sailors. Our ship has 80. Where's the wind coming from? Is it coming straight on? Uh, why are we not even moving? I don't even know if our cannons can penetrate the side of this ship. It'd be pretty awesome if we could do something against these guys, but... I get the sense that's not going to happen. I suppose we could go for chain shot and see if we could take out their sails. But 70 crew versus 200, so boarding isn't really an option. We're already down two of our 12 cannons. The wind direction, I believe that's here. I don't see... So it's... I'm not entirely sure. Or is this the compass? No, that's the that's that's the compass, isn't it? Oh, this little red icon here is the wind. Oh wow, your aim sucks, guys. But yeah, so you can see here the, the red, I believe, is the, I'm trying to remember, the blue represents like flotation, the red represents kind of like armor, I think, and I think the, I think, is the orange rigging, maybe? I'm really not, I'd have to go back and play Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail to look. But you can see over here, we've got 10 guns, we've lost two, two crew members have been killed. 100% sales, 65% hull. All right, can we get out of here? If I just like leave, does the battle... I, I'd like to get my sail, my ships out of here, because this is, it's a cool sh this sailing mechanic and it's a cool naval battle mechanic, but we have no chance of winning that. So if I could order my fleet to retreat, that would be great. Okay. And by fleet, I mean my single ship. Can you retreat? I don't want you to fight. All right, it looks like he's locked in combat, which is disappointing. Anyway, we're up to 1,500 soldiers at Newport. 
it's tempting, right? Because it's like, oh, those are even odds with the British. We could make a we could make a play and march on them. And then it's like, oh no, you can't. That's a really dumb idea. Our ammunition is real low. I'd almost rather just scrap this unit. It's got such good experience, but it's just a single company. All right, 500 additional troops are coming to Boston by sea, and we lost our ship, didn't we? Yeah. Um, all right, so we've reinforced almost all of our boys. Well, actually, no, the 84th. They've still got a fairer ways to go. Same for the Massachusetts militia. So let's go to the production management screen here. Go to muskets. It wants me to build 100 muskets. I don't really need muskets. I've got 1,200 in stock. But let's build 100 and just so we can try and accomplish that objective. It'll give me some reputation. I can actually just type this in. It won't really cost much in the way of resources, so... Does anybody have the ability to actually, I don't, I don't know that anybody has the ability to make muskets. We've got a recruiting house, a dock and a town hall. I don't know that we have anyone who can make. Okay. Do I have to research that tech? Firearms production plus five percent. Hunter rifle. I would think civilian muskets you can produce. You can see there's different types of muskets. I think we can produce. Um, it almost doesn't look like we can, but. Because basically it's infinity days to complete. All right, these guys, there's no reason to have them be the priority number one. They're the smallest unit. They are my best unit, but... Second Continental Congress meets in Philadelphia, realizing the complexity of the situation. Weapons to form more units, 400 muskets. Ammunition or money. We need ammo badly. All right, so we'll get these two units that are still shot up a bit. Top priority. And actually, we're going to outnumber the British here once these guys all get fully resupplied. Ammunition at Hartford is back to max of two. That warehouse. It'd be interesting to see, like, maybe we go for and march on, on Providence. I know I, I said we weren't going to do that, but if I can outnumber the enemy. God damn it. Just as I'm planning, thinking about it. 500 more enemy troops on the way to Providence. Because we've got about 200 more here to recruit and about. Four hundred more here. Meanwhile, five hundred new enemy troops arrive at Providence. You know what? What if we do this? What if 
we have our general leave the garrison. We have Massachusetts militia, Pennsylvania militia, and second Connecticut leave. Form an army here. We leave a garrison at Newport, those troops who are still recovering. And that garrison will grow stronger in time. Form a brigade of these three regiments. It's with the birds, jeez. Okay. So, we move these boys. Coker's Brigade of 1,300 soldiers. And let's see if we can move them, I don't know, maybe up through toward Leicester. I don't know what the British might have there. We've got only about a third of our potential ammunition, but we need to do something to spice things up. Newport won't hold if the British attack it, but we might have a strong enough garrison there to buy some time. We'll try and move just directly on Lester. Butcher can go ahead and maybe scout things out. And if they've got too large a garrison at Lester, then we'll move toward Fort Stevens, far in the north, and see what they've got there. Basically just a roaming band of patriots. I guess we could have brought this 120 men of the 6th Connecticut with us because they are maxed out, but... Yeah, I can't do anything here. I can't build anything here that produces muskets as far as I can tell. I think I've got to unlock new building types. Or maybe... What if I Yeah, these are just the buildings we've already built. So I don't really have any industry buildings here yet. I would think the blacksmith building would produce guns or something. I, d I really don't understand. I guess that's what I get for not watching some of the video tutorial type things they have. Yeah, Lester is, is outnumbered two to one if we assault. So let's try and get our troops up there. Meanwhile, our artillery department is completed. We've also completed a recruitment house. So we can go ahead and assign an artillery chief. Now that we've unlocked artillery, we'll do Samson Byrne. He's the best of the three options there. Artillery can do... I guess we've got to do revolutionary artillery, which improves speed of the, the research there. And then... Is there anything we should be researching here? Barracks... Army innovation is necessary to allow us to get to building fusilier and artillery companies. So we're going to go with army innovation. Even though it probably isn't a bad idea to go with quartermaster or intelligence department to get another HQ, I need to be able to start building things more effectively. So that's, that's why we'll go that direction. Meanwhile, we're up to 800 men in the garrison at Newport. Still got about 170 more men we can raise, so we can get it just over a thousand. Wouldn't you know? We'd still be out number two to one. We'd still fall if the enemy launched an assault from Providence, but we can launch an assault toward Leicester, and unless some 
British reinforcements arrive, which is certainly possible, then we can outnumber these guys two to one. And I think we would launch and just straight launch an assault on Leicester rather than wait because reinforcements are coming. Okay, let's just launch the assault before those 500 reinforcements come we can see on the map. And we'll fight this tactical battle and see if we can if we can take Leicester. It's a win it sounds like a winter battle, but it's May. Or it's at least raining. All right, so you can see here the force we have arrayed. It's one brigade. Ammo's low. I'm sure the British won't have that problem. But we do outnumber the enemy two to one. We're formed up in a double line here. Where am I? Am I not on this map? Oh, I'm back here. So you can see we have a little bit more space between us and the British because we initiated the battle the moment that uh, the game led us, whereas like in previous tactical battles, we engaged the British only after we were like close and technically shooting at them. You can see the British are coming at us. Doesn't look like they have any artillery, so that's nice. Trying to put some troops in cover as best we can. And then maybe we can try and flank the enemy. I mean, we've got more units. They've only got four companies by the looks of it. Oh, shit, they do have artillery. But it's raining and it's off at, at greater range, so hopefully it's ineffective. Let's try and flank them. Now, they've got a couple more companies over here off on the right. At least one more. Let's use our greater numerical advantage here to maybe gang up on some of these guys. You know, we've got twice as many muskets. Our units may not be as good shooting at the enemy as they are at us, but... We got more muskets. At some point, that should play a, play a role, right? What are you doing? Halt. Just shoot. I know we don't have a ton of ammo to play around with, but I don't necessarily want you to run into melee the enemy. Let's keep our let's try to keep our casualties low. It would be great if we could break them with uh Again, I don't like these that these deaths don't reset every battle. But it would be great if we could if we could break these guys with gunfire. You know, we've got a considerable manpower advantage, although taking enemy artillery fire head on is not my ideal way to fight. We have no artillery, so don't do that, guys. Maybe we can capture some guns though. But we've got considerably more men than them on the firing line right now, and I'm hoping it shows. Our casualties don't seem too bad. I understand they're working on a post-battle screen right now, so that'll be nice. All right, move these guys up. There's at least two... There's at least one artillery battery back here behind this wood line. Oh, you cowards. What are you guys running for? All right. These troops are fresher, so we're going to melee now. Route 
scouting that regiment. God, my boys on the right are just breaking and running. I got to assume it's because their condition is terrible. So we broke their left, drove them back. Who are they blocked by? There's no one. There's no one over there that's blocking you, buddy. Right, let's let these guys rest a bit. Maybe we can go melee their artillery, drive the rest of them off the map, destroy some of them. It would be helpful if we could actually completely destroy some of their units, some of their regiments, so that they can't just reform them, that they gotta bring in Reinforcements, which they will undoubtedly get. Where are you retreating to now? Apparently they don't like standing up to artillery fire, which I suppose is understandable. That volley isn't great. Like, where are they retreat? What are they retreating for? I don't even understand some of these units. Well, these guys got absolutely demolished by that artillery. They lost like 70 men. That's not good. My biggest problem is my troops don't have the frickin' morale or energy to stand. It's all conditioning. Alright. Those British troops are retreating. I don't know that charging that far is a good idea, but... Alright, I'm just going melee ham now at this point. There's only a handful of British regiments left. I'm trying to minimize my own casualties. Ammunition is low. So if we've got two, you know, companies here with serviceable conditioning, charge them into the British and hopefully we route them. It looks like that worked here. These boys are routing. Come on, friendly fire, really? I don't know, like, so the artillery apparently still has muskets by the looks of it, which is a little bit, well, not great. Not great, Bob. Is that a fresh company? Fresh hell if it is. I don't think they're fresh, at least. Try and rest, guys. My own troops are routing after trying to charge that artillery and losing lots of men doing it. Hey, guys. Please don't route off the map. All right, I just need more time. I know, I know the rain is bad.
you got to think the the British's conditioning isn't great either, right? You would hope. Of course, the general's conditioning is great. Okay, those British are routing. I guess that's what happens when you outnumber them two to one, even if their condition your conditioning is terrible. Are they back on the guns? Several of my units routed off the map, but all right. So now we outnumber them like three to one over here. All right, they're routing. Nice. We destroyed their battalion of artillery too. Can we seize the guns? I don't know how that works. Can you not? There we go. We got the guns. The enemy army flees from the battlefield. All right. Well, I, I, what do we have going in? 1,300 men. They had 700. So we'll go back to the global map and see how that treats us. The weather was not great. I suspect I may have been better off letting the AI fight that one. Okay, so we lost about 700 men. We lost about half our force. They lost about the same number of men. So we'll go ahead and garrison Leicester, I think, once we take it. Or we'll end up fighting another battle versus an enemy where we do not have the, the ammo to fight it. 500 men, five companies. What happens if the AI fights this one? Can we win? Does not look like it. I believe we're routing. Although it's actually a preferable route because we didn't lose that many men. We lost like 30 men against them. They're probably going to fall back to Hertford, I'm guessing. Maybe 50. Leicester is burning, interestingly enough. So we shattered one British army. We actually won a victory earlier in this battle or in this, this episode, if you will. But then Leicester was denied us our victory so so the boys will fall back to Hartford where they can rest and recuperate All right, we got some more ammo from the Patriots the Patriots network can we get more ammo from Hartford? I really need I really need more ammo. Uh Okay, so the boys at Newport are pretty much equipped out, trick tripped out, tricked out, tripped out, whatever. Uh does everybody have their experience items purchased? Yes. So we've actually, we have won a battle. It's a miracle. 
Um, like yeah, it would be it would be great to be able to do something with the six Connecticut. A single company of 120 men is not terribly valuable. Meanwhile, Newport's built up to a thousand men. Where does it, so it shows you army reports, officer, population, material. It doesn't really make clear what's produced where though. France and Spain are dissolving their alliance and tensions are rising between them. It's not exactly great. Okay, we got 15 more days till the next thing happens. So yeah, we've got production here, but we've got no actual production occurring. We have no production points. We have no facilities in the regions that produce anything. Now, when the map expands, that may change. But again, so we get production points by having a blacksmith's house. Okay, that makes sense. So let's go ahead and build a blacksmith's house. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm still figuring things out here. But yeah, if we build a blacksmith house, let's do it at, at, uh, at both of these. Then we'll get a half a production point at each, which I assume can then be used to build those muskets. I, I assume that's how it works, is the total value you have for production points in some abstract sense is what you're allowed to then convert into actual production. Construction points, meanwhile are generated in individual towns here and can be leveraged for building the buildings. But yeah, May 18th, we're kind of turtling a little bit. We won that battle near Leicester, bloodied the British nose a bit. And now we're just sort of recuperating here back at Hartford. We've almost regained our, our soldiers' losses in manpower. Ammunition is still an issue. We're at like one third of our potential ammunition stockpile. I don't need to raise taxes. I've got I've got more income than I've got expenses. Materials less so, so we may need to expand material production. I'm not sure when the map opens up. It might be April 1st. That would make sense. But we're up to full strength, at least in terms of manpower. 1,400 boys. Let's go ahead and try to... Let's go scout out Leicester. I don't know if they've sent reinforcements there or what the deal is, but I want to try and keep pressure on them so they don't drive on Newport, especially now that I'm building these blacksmith houses, or I guess, have I completed them? Assuming this green line represents production underway. Way fewer production points at Newport, by the way, only 0.6. Makes sense. Newport's workforce is 5,000 versus Hartford, which is 18,000. But let's see what's up here at Leicester. There is a wagon here. It could just be... Tra no, they've, only got, they've got 500 men there. I'm going to see if the AI does a better job of fighting against the British than I do. I was hoping to end the battle quickly last time, which is why I led the assault myself. Oh, they're sending reinforcements. Okay, let's fight again. 
We'll try and win another victory against an isolated British garrison, and if we can do it without losing 700 men, maybe we can stop the reinforcing enemy force too. So let's line up here. The troops do have a bit more ammo than they did last time too, so that should help. What's the condition? We've been marching, so the condition is... Well, 50%, 50%. It's not bad weather, which I'm hopeful that means our conditioning will, will stay better for longer. The enemy has some skirmishers, which is interesting. These are, they're green coats. I don't know if that's supposed to mean rifles, but in reality, that would have been Tories, right? Like loyalists. We'll see if we can get up and over the enemy flank. Some of these guys at least have some cover, which is nice. And a double line is actually a, probably a preferable strategy too, because what you can do if you have two lines of battle, is one of the lines can kind of rest while the other fires, because they can't shoot through them. The main problem with fighting it out with the British at this point is I just don't have the uh, ammunition to do it over an extended period of time. Let's try and advance on their flank here. You can see the conditioning is holding steady in the 50s for some of these boys who aren't, who aren't moving. It'd be nice to have like a supply wagon or two to And I don't really want to charge I guess we'll charge with these guys even though their conditioning is zero Just because then we'll outnumber the enemy of two to one and, and presumably we'll have a better Yeah, you can see they're routing very quickly So that little melee worked to our advantage. Badly shot that enemy unit up without too, too much in the way of losses on our end. So the enemy's routing. I, I could try and pursue to inflict more casualties on the enemy, but frankly, I'm just going to take this victory. That was a, a pretty cheaply won victory for us, rather than pursuing further. I'm assuming they won't want to jump right back into a battle right away against us. Maybe we can take Leicester this time. I don't know if we defeat that army, if the 500 reinforcements coming up will shy away from fighting again. They're still fighting, but it does have them as retreating at least. So we only lost like 70 men. Meanwhile, they're routing... And we've got another 500 redcoats here. We outnumber them better than 2 to 1. So let's keep an eye on this, how this auto-resolve kind of works. Forty-one level. What's this? Recruiting officers, so it increases our officer level? I don't really know what that means. There's more reinforcements coming. This is going to be a never-ending thing, isn't it? They're going to keep pouring reinforcements in until we... God damn it. And now we're going to get rolled, aren't we? Because it's pretty much even odds. So, yep, the enemy... The enemy defeated me. Again. I shouldn't have waited. I should have just gone hard to start. Again, but the AI battles are much more realistic in terms of losses. Like, you lose, but you lose 30% of your army instead of half of it. Hopefully they don't pursue me all the way to Hartford. That would be bad. 
So I think that that's the lesson. You just if you find the enemy is outnumbered, you gotta rush them. You can't wait for them to. You can't wait for them to reinforce. All right, low on ammo. We're going to pull back into Hartford. Fortunately, we didn't lose too many men there. So all told, we've got about 2,300 troops, I think, when our, when our force is at full, full strength. I wonder if we gained some nice experience in that fight. Nope. Nobody gained any real experience to speak of. Great. Um, how are the research projects going? Seven days till the engineers of the revolution is done. 22 days on revolutionary artillery. 28 days on army re reorganization. Hartford is still building that blacksmith house. It's about halfway done. Newport is, they haven't even finished the recruiting house. They're a ways away. Black market gives me more muskets. Is it really just, like, is this done? Yeah, so, so those are being constructed. These are done. Okay. All right, so do we pull troops out of Newport to give us more strength for the assault on Lester, or do we... Bypass Luster and go for Fort Stevens and try and draw them draw them north. Not enough muskets. Really? I used all the muskets in our stocks? Just I guess reinforcements consume muskets rather than new just new units. So we really need to finish that uh that blacksmith house so we get some production points. Let's send General Butcher up to do some reconnaissance here. We're going to go march north and see what we can learn about Fort Stevens. So last intel we had was Lester has 582 men at the moment. But again, they can easily bring reinforcements up from Boston, which is what they were doing. What will I get if I do this? Reputation plus 10. Fort Stevens has 600 men. The thing about Fort Stevens is it's more isolated. And if we take a look at the supply network, it's connected to Portsmouth, which I'm assuming the British don't have as large of a garrison there, given its strategic position. It's not directly on a road to Boston. So if we can get up to Fort Stevens, it's going to be a much easier nut to crack. Meanwhile, they've got 1,800 1,800 troops in Leicester. We are not assaulting that successfully. General Butcher. So if you don't have enough muskets, can you even fight? Like, Because they're trying to come after me with 600 men. Redcoats performed a raid on Chelsea Creek, sending for per, seeking for provisions supported by newly arrived fresh troops. One of our spies has collected information about a large British force sailing to Newport. They plan to land and raid the area loyal to our cause. That's not great. In any event, 666 men, the Devil's Regiment up here. So if they're going to assault Newport... Hey... I may have to pull those 1,000 troops out of Newport back to Hartford. 
I also don't even know how effectively the troops who are in Hartford can fight without uh, without enough muskets. Assuming that spy's intelligence is accurate. Maybe what this means is we can't reinforce fully because we don't have enough muskets and that the troops that we do have can still fight. That's probably it. At least our ammunition is in better shape now. Condition of those boys is also better. Granted, they've been sitting doing nothing. If it's just 300 men on these ships, then, then maybe we got a chance. I don't know. We'll see. I'm guessing those are the sailors though, and not the not the troops they're transporting. Well, maybe not. Oh well, it looks like they're coming coming ashore, or at least sailing toward the shore. Did they land an army? Sixteen hundred men. Fuck. No, 300 men? So did they just land and they're not going to do anything then? Because I'm marching these boys out to try and engage them outnumbering them two to one but that would seem fruitless at this point as the enemy appears to be withdrawing we'll just make sure there's no additional troops at newport uh six provisions because of a farmer's revolt who are sympathetic to the revolution god save the revolution Man, they're building up a force at Providence here. 2,400 troops, another 400 are about to join them. Move these troops into the garrison at Newport for the time being. That might make them think twice. I mean, they don't outnumber us two to one anymore, so maybe... Six hundred more boys going here. If the enemy starts moving toward Providence, I'm just going to pull my troops out because I can't hold verse thirty-three hundred, verse four thousand. All right, actually, projects at the HQ. It looks like we finished something. Uh, Engineers of the Revolution increases research speed, so we can go ahead and. Build a fur factory, rum factory, or cigar factory if we do the qualified engineers. Increase intelligence or reduce intelligence cost or reduce research speed. We're going to go with the reduced research speed, skilled craftsmen. I don't know what fur, rum, or cigars are going to do for me. I guess probably generate more money, but the economy is not the problem right now. Unless. Can I? Oh, no. That, that research can only be done by the commander, I guess. Commander in chief. Lame. All right. So if the enemy brings a large force against me out of Providence, pulls these, well, I got 4,400 troops or 4,100 troops sitting in Providence right now. Oh, the map expanded. There you go. I know some of you were asking in the previous videos, hey, does the map get bigger? It does. This is, I don't even think this is the max size right now. This is just... A slight expansion of the map so you can see here we've got Hartford we've also got Hatfield New Haven Kingston are all on our control Fort Montgomery is not I'd be curious what does the enemy have at Fort Montgomery because that would be an interesting little thing to take along the Hudson I think that's the Hudson River It's, it's, 
isolated. Granted, it's not going to produce a ton. It's just a fort, but... Now that we have New Haven as well, which also has a dock. 24,000 people in New Haven. Let's go ahead and build a, a blacksmith house there. Because I need to, I need to be able to produce muskets. If we're going to run out of muskets and have to depend on events for things to get better, we need more muskets. see here can i not dragon all right so you can see we've got limited production in these four regions which we control parts of new york and then do we it expanded north so we actually control falmouth it expands all the way up to falmouth now so we've got another town up here they took portsmouth but all right but with that being said, guys, I've been going for almost an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. I will say that um, I don't know. I'm actually, I've never done this before, but my brother-in-law invited me to go with him and my father-in-law deer hunting this weekend. So I will be, as this video posts, sitting in a blind somewhere. Um, or actually, no, this, this is going to go up Friday. But um, I don't know if I'll have a chance to record anything else from my Ultimate General American Revolution series until Sunday night. So you might not see any more videos from this until Monday. I do have another video from Yes, Your Grace and from Grand Tactician lined up to air. Um, if I get another Ultimate General video, then I will I will post that instead on Saturday. I probably won't have anything Sunday um, except, you know, those previous videos I mentioned. So we'll see. Um, I also do want to do like, I don't know. I don't, I don't like jumping in on the clickbait, but a lot of channels are, are posting like it's the total war killer. And I don't know if I agree with that, to be honest. Um, I have reasons, but the idea of like, this one's going to bring creative assembly down. It's not impossible. Creative assembly is having challenges for sure, but it does remind me back of early Android days when everybody was like the iPhone killer and Android did very well, but nothing killed the iPhone. Um, and while I do love games like grand tactician and I, I'm very encouraged by ultimate general, uh, Re American revolution. I think there are reasons that those games are unlikely to replace, um, total war. I do think there for some people it might, but in terms of, changing the industry or having a meaningful impact on total war i think it's much more likely that these games will succeed and sell a bunch of copies i don't know that it means that total war will sell any less um but i'm th i'm thinking about maybe putting together kind of like a i don't know that i'd call it an industrial analysis uh, or a market analysis or anything like that but something a little bit more thoughtful than just a let's play video kind of talking through like hey what are some of the other games out there like manor lord another game that's coming that looks real great um, but I think there are structural advantages that Creative Assembly has that probably means Total War is not going anywhere. I know there's a lot of folks speculating that they're in real trouble. They lost a lot of money, but it wasn't from a Total War game that flopped, as far as I'm aware. So uh, so we'll see. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. Um, but uh, that could be a pop podcast episode, too. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks again for coming out, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. And until next time, as always, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.